Welcome to another episode of the Always Do Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Nichols. So happy to be back and recording an episode. It's been a couple weeks, and I'll be honest, it was because I was overthinking and hesitating and lost traction during the holidays. If anybody can relate out there, you know what it's like when you lose a little bit of traction and momentum during the holiday season, whether it's with family around and friends and eating different kinds of foods and then the new year i didn't go out and celebrate of course but um did some goal setting and that's exactly what we're going to talk about today is i did a little bit of this last year um and it was just kind of joining someone else's um little free goal setting course that they ran and to be honest i left it and i felt great but then afterward nothing happened so this year i wanted to come up with something that would stick that was meaningful that didn't just make me feel good inside and then the next day I was just back to being lost again so that's the whole point of this podcast right here and it's also a prelude to what I'm doing on January 7th 2023 in my Facebook group the always do Facebook group I'm going to go live for the first time and share everything that I've tried out, all of these tools and techniques that I've used. If you followed any of my journey, you know it's been about six months of changing my life and I have experimented with so many different things. And this year was experimenting with goal setting and so far so good, because here I am back at it, recording podcasts, reading books, summaries coming up with all sorts of different things and um, just lots of big things in the plan for 2023. So the title of this episode is called Reflecting on 2022 and an Identity for 2023. And the key word there is obviously identity and that's what we're going to focus on. And I'm going to talk a little bit about this today and why it's so important. But first, as always, Actually, let me do this one thing first. I'm going to say that I don't know if it's sponsored by Audible, but I use Audible all the time. I am an avid reader and I love audiobooks. Uh, If you know the Pareto principle, it's about 80%, 20%. That's how the world almost always splits itself up in all kinds of ways. You can look at it in business. What are 20% of the things that I do that give me 80% of the results? And we're actually going to talk about that in the goal setting. But anyways, I read about 80% or listen to 80% audiobooks. They're just perfect on the go. I can't get enough of them. I I just absolutely love it. Um, And again, some people it's not for because the audio doesn't work or they're distracted. But for me, it works perfectly. And then I like to go for a walk and walking and reading books is probably one of my favorite things. So anyways, I'll put a link in the description. If you click on it, um, I get a bazillion dollars and become super rich. Um, No, I get a little bit of a commission. But anyways, okay, next, what are you grateful for? Take a second, take a second. What are you grateful for? For me, it's tea. Go figure of all things. I was a coffee drinker. I did it for about two months. I shouldn't say I'm a coffee drinker. I actually didn't do it my entire life. And then last year in November and December, at the end of the year, I was having about a cup a day for the the two months there. And when I did my five day water fast, I didn't drink anything but water and felt the effects of coffee withdrawal. And it was pretty rough. I'm not going to lie to you. I had a headache so bad I could barely see out of my eyeballs. So that kind of got me to think maybe I shouldn't drink so much coffee. So anyways, having tea these days, and I'm really grateful for it. It makes the transition, I think, a little bit easier from coffee. It has caffeine in it. I don't really feel the effects of it like I guess I did with coffee. Um, but also I don't really want to rely on anything and I just like the taste of it. So grateful for tea. And again, just find something around you that you're grateful for. I think doing that, at least if you ever listen to this podcast and you just do that once in a day, that's, that's good. It's a good start. Um, and then you can keep building on that. Try and catch yourself, you know, every little bit throughout the day, take a deep breath, look around you, look at your hands, look at your body, see where you are, see what you're doing and be grateful for something. Okay, the quote of the day comes from the man himself, Mr. Habit, James Clear. And it says, quote, Results have little to do with the goals we set and nearly everything to do with the systems we follow. Goals are the results we want to achieve. Systems are the processes that lead to those results. If you want results, forget goals. End quote. 
this is everything. This is one of the major things I've learned. And I still struggle with, to be honest. Again, if you're listening to this, I am, I feel like pretty early on in my journey, you know, six months in and the first couple months were sporadic. And I was, I was following my grade eight. I talk about this all the time. I'm trying to simplify things like people could be like, Oh, if I do these eight things, I will be better. And I believe in them wholeheartedly. And some of those, you know, exercise, meditate, read journal, get sunshine, eat healthy, sleep and socialize. Those are the eight. Oh, I got them all just like that. Love it. Um, but yeah, if you can do those things, you will have a good, meaningful, happy life. And I talk about those all the time. And one of the things I've learned is those have to be habits. You need them to be habits. They can't just be a goal. You can't just sit there and say, oh, I'm going to, you know, meet some friends this year in 2023 to be more social. Not, not going to happen. It will not happen if you do that. And I think more of us need to hear the reality of this. I, you must have heard this quote. I know I have so many times or this statistic by February, like almost everybody will have stopped going to the gym. I don't know why this keeps coming up. It is probably the most used or overused. I don't even know. I didn't even fact check it, but I just hear it all the time. And to be honest, I don't know if I need to fact check it because it's not even that people just stop from January to February. I see it every day of my life where people are just like, I'm going to eat healthy this week. And two days later, they're eating pizza. So it's again, we all know this happens. And my question was, why? Why is this happening? Why, why, why? And that leads to what James Clear says, systems. And that's the thing I found for myself is you need to have a system. But then that comes down to, okay, what are systems? How do you get those? And that's kind of what we're going to talk about today and the rest of the podcast and also in the live that I do tomorrow. But the first thing is, I want to say this. I came up with this idea as you have 24 coins. Every single day when you wake up, you get 24 coins in your hand. It's pretty cool, right? Everybody would like 24 coins. However, immediately when you wake up that day, I take away eight coins. And if you haven't guessed it now, the 24 coins are the hours you have in a day. And if you know me, I think the importance of sleep is very important. And I think you should be in bed at least eight hours because you're not getting the full eight hours. It takes time to sleep. You might wake up. You might be a little bit restless. All in all, you're probably losing. Maybe who knows if you're a really good sleeper, you're still losing 30 minutes. If you're not a great sleeper, you could be losing an hour. So if you're in bed for eight hours, you're really only getting seven hours of actual sleep. So anyways, there go eight coins. And then you have the rest of the coins to spend. And we won't really get into that, but that's what this is all about. How do you set goals? How do you know how to spend those coins? And one side of the coin is obviously time. That's kind of what the coin is, but there is actually another side to the coin. There are two sides to every coin, and the other side is focus slash attention slash awareness. You could have all the time in the world, but if you're out just moseying around in the forest, well, that's not so bad either. But if you're doing that your entire life and not really focusing on anything that's important, your family, your obligations, your bills, things like that, then you're going to have other problems. So you need to spend your coins of time and focus, attention, awareness wisely. And that's when we get into the goals. People don't know how to spend it. I didn't know how to spend it. I didn't even know you could spend coins. I didn't know there was another side to the coin. I didn't even actually realize there was time. I never paid attention to that. I just, just I think the Buddha says that when he was asked, what's the biggest mistake that people make? And he says, the biggest mistake is thinking you have time. Ooh, that is a powerful one. And I know I was part of that. I just thought, oh, life is going to go on forever. Yeah, I don't know about that. So you got to use your time wisely. And then the other part is what you put your focus and attention and awareness towards. Okay, so when we're talking about goals, I think one of the most important things is to really break it down. And I came up with a bunch of categories here. It's also, I think it's called the wheel of life, but it's not exactly like that. It's a little bit different. I just kind of brainstormed a few categories. Some of them overlap and they are important because when we create goals, we need to point our awareness in a direction. We can't just say certain little things like, oh, I'm just going to meet some friends this year. It's nice to have them categorized into these sections and they are health, people and connection, 
relationships, lifestyle, finances, contribution, career and mission. I know those can be two separate things. They don't have to be the same, but it's nice if they overlap. Spirituality. That one gets a bad rep. I used to think spirituality was wild, wild stuff out of my realm. But now I'm like, oh, I think I see it more as, you know, getting in tune, having a belief in something, you know. Okay, next, emotions and meaning. And finally, activities, fun, and adventure. So 10 categories I came up with. And I just like to keep those in mind moving forward when I'm setting goals and how I perceive my 2023 to shape up because these are generally the categories they fall under. And I think it makes it easier to grasp. And we're also going to break that down because having 10 categories and just going in full steam ahead, I'm going to be healthy. I'm going to socialize with everybody. I'm going to have the best love life and relationships, and I'm going to make tons of money and I'm going to give it all away and all these things. If you have 10 categories where you're going to try and improve yourself, I have to be honest, you won't be able to do it. It's not, I don't think it's realistic. And that's one problem so many people run into is the reality of 365 tries is not a lot of tries, to be honest, right? Like I've noticed that over my six months, I thought I was going to be a millionaire, have a perfect body, have a perfect mindset after six months of working on myself. Cause you see these videos and social media where people are like, Oh yeah, just disappear for six months. You can change your whole life. You can start all this Amazon FBA or these side hustles and be rich in no time. It's, I don't think life works like that. Now that I'm really in it and I see it. Okay. I could have worked a lot harder and maybe been more focused in my time and effort, But realistically, 365 tries to get something perfect and make a bazillion dollars while working on your mindset and your socialization and your relationships and doing fun activities, it's a lot to handle. So we got to break that down, I think. But before we do that, and we're going to do this tomorrow, is a little writing task. And this is also, the podcast is also for somebody who is an auditory listener, doesn't catch the live, and maybe you catch this podcast or you want to re-listen to it and you want a little breakdown of the steps this is it. You can re-listen to this and this is kind of what we're going to do. So the first step is after we have the category, we've got our 24 coins, we see the categories, and then I want to look back at 2022. I think there's so much to be found in self-reflection. I think people are horrible at it because they just keep going, going forward, 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 forward. I'm not a big fan of living in the past. This is very different. This is simply looking back. What are the lessons I can gain and learn? And how can I apply those moving forward? That's what history is, taking what it is from the past and giving yourself new options and new alternatives moving forward based on what you've learned. So that's what we're going to do. Tomorrow is a review and I basically have it set up. You're going to split it up into two columns. You're going to do a positive column and a negative column. And we're just going to go by month. So if you're listening to this, you would just look back at 2022 January. What were the positive things? 2022... January, what were the negative things? And you're just going to kind of list them out. So have a calendar and you can look at that. Um, Doesn't have to be too complicated, but you'll be surprised at first. I was like, geez, I'm not going to be able to remember each month. And then when you look at the month, you're like, oh, wait, yeah, this was the birthday party. Oh, I met some friends here on this weekend. Didn't I visit somebody here? Oh, that was a good positive. Oh, here I did this for me. It was a big positive was in February. I did all the stand-up comedy shows. So I took my fear and I beat it up, which is pretty exciting. And then after we do that, the positive and negative, we're going to look at that and we're going to basically have a little column that says learned and do better. So these are kind of where I noticed they got a little generic, but that's okay. Mine kind of said the same thing. Um, And this is why I think all of us kind of not suffer, but we all struggle with the same things. And it came down to take more action, stop procrastinating, eat healthy, um, get more sunshine, be more social, all these things. And this is why I came up with the grade eight, because I just find that every single time when we look back at something that we wanted to do, it comes down to something in those categories. Be a better person, show more kindness, all of these things. So... After we do that, we're going to have a little section where it's what must you let go? What must you let go? And you can look at the negative column here. What are the things you need to let go? This is where you got to get honest. These are hard. It's It was hard for me too. I had to 
kind of cut people out of my life, which I think is one of the hardest things because nobody intentionally is trying to drag you down or stop you. If you're trying to eat healthy, the people in your life that are eating unhealthy, they're not trying to drag you down in a bad way, even though it might seem that way when they're offering you food and cooking bad food or whatever, but you need to block yourself off to protect yourself from that happening. And it makes it easier to change until you come out stronger on the other side and can trust yourself to do these things. But what are things you got to let go? Maybe you need to let go of people in your life who were negative influences. Maybe you really have to let go of that shitty food that's slowly killing you and your gut microbiome and not powering your brain like it should because there's no nutrients in it you know these are things you gotta get serious on what do you have to let go then the next thing is we're gonna look at the positive column and we're gonna say what are the 20 percent? here we go to the 80 20 principle what are the 20 percent of things that i can take from the positive column to increase my positive experiences in 2023. I found this to be really, really powerful. So I had, I actually didn't have too many things. I had about 20 things listed, which means I was going to take four things. That's 20%. And I was going to schedule them in my life. And just to prove to you that I've done, actually, as I said, this is one of them. Going live tomorrow is one of the things. So... Of the 20% of the positive things, one of the positive things that came up that I thought would really improve my 2023 was taking something that's terrifying and doing it. And that was the stand-up comedy. So I had to ask myself, how can I do that or something similar in 2023? Because it was such a positive, even though it was so scary, it was such a positive for me. I wanted to do that in 2023. And guess what? On January 7th, the first weekend, I'm going live on Facebook for the first time. It's super uncomfortable for me. I've never done a live before. I have no idea if anyone's even going to show up to do these things. And whoa, of course, what if I suck? What if I don't help anybody? That's got to be one of the hardest things is the whole reason for doing that is to really help people. And what if it doesn't? So there's tons of self-doubt anyways, just to show you that I'm doing it, scheduled it, have it planned. And this is the thing I found personally I struggled with is everyone... I'm afraid people might do the live and then be like, oh yeah, okay, I'll change that. But they don't actually schedule it. If you don't schedule it or do something or make a little move, I know Tony Robbins says this too. I've seen it around. And he just says, if whatever gets scheduled gets done. And if you just leave uh, this podcast or the live, just like, okay, yeah, I'll do that in a few weeks. It will be the end of the year and you wouldn't have done it. So these are the honest realities that I've learned is you have to really do it. Okay. And then after that, we got the positive. You pick a few things that you can really focus on and schedule. And again, if you haven't noticed, we're simplifying things. We're getting smaller and smaller from our 10 categories now to about four things you put on your calendar where you're like, this Sunday, I'm going to go meet a friend and have a coffee that I haven't talked to in a while. Boom, done. Send him a text message. It's over. Done. You've now just accomplished some of your 20%. That's going to increase your positive experience in 2023. Next, who are you right now? now now this is where we come to the present 2022 goodbye now who are you right now and i have here in my notes is be brutally honest i wrote i again not a huge fan of being harsh on yourself but you have to be real with yourself and if real is harsh then you have to do it and i wrote some not super flattering stuff I was still stuck in indecision and inaction and just wasting so much time looking back and towards the end of the year saying that I was going to finish off the year eating healthy and I didn't. So you got to be honest with those things. You are the only one who knows what you failed at and you failed at some stuff. So you've got to be honest. Who who are you? Not where you are in your life. Oh, I'm, I'm here and I want to start a business. No. Who? Who are you? Are you the person that still doesn't trust yourself? Are you the person that still doesn't show up to the gym? Are you the person that still doesn't eat healthy? Are you the person that doesn't smile as much as you thought you did? Who are you? Seriously, this is so important to ask yourself and you've got to be real. Who are you now? Why are you listening to this? Why are you going to be in the goal setting course tomorrow? Why? Because you're not who you need to be. That's why. So start getting real, list out the things that you're 
you're struggling in. And then next, we're going a little dark here before we get brighter, but the next step is going to be imagine the worst 2023 with who you are right now, struggling, not showing up, eating unhealthy, not going for walks, not saying I love you to the people that you love, not making amends, not socializing, not meeting friends, not having fun, not smiling, just all of these things. Imagine it to be the worst and write out, you know, I'm Give five minutes where you just write out five minutes, the worst thing, worst case scenario. I know this is a little bit dark, but what if you keep eating unhealthy and you know, you have a heart attack or heart disease. Let's be honest. I think it, yeah, it's Peter Adia. He says, if you are over 40, you are going to die from one of four diseases. You have an 80% chance of that happening. And they are heart disease, cardiovascular disease, neurodegenerative disease and cerebral disease. So basically brain and body, something in there is going to go and it's all based. What I think a lot is obviously stress and different factors, but a lot comes back down to what you're putting in your body and how you're moving your body. So I won't go off on a tangent on that, but imagine the worst. And then next, if you're listening to this and you're doing this, you can pause it tune back in and now imagine the best 2023 i was thinking of doing this i i've oh what was it maybe i did this with somebody a while ago when when you're getting into self-improvement you tend to run into these coaching things um i'm not saying i'm against it i'm not trying to be a coach i'm just trying to share experiences but i do remember one where it was like close your eyes imagine your best self every day goes perfectly and again these are great. They make you feel good. They make you think good. That's nice to have those things, but they don't translate to the day to day when it's a Tuesday afternoon at 2 p.m. and you just ate lunch and you're like, oh, I got to do this. And then you don't want to do it. It doesn't closing your eyes and imagining your best self doesn't work like that. That's not life. It's not reality. So anyways, you can close your eyes and do that if it makes you feel good. I think just be realistic. What's the best 2023 with you right now? If you start to improve an area or two or three, what's the best thing that could realistically happen? Not all this, you know, oh, your best self every single day is perfect. It's amazing. It's flowing waterfalls and butterflies. It's maybe I am too much of a realist, but that's not how life works. It doesn't. I know it. I went so hard the last six months. I feel like I went full time on improving myself. And every day is so difficult. And you have to face the reality of that. Maybe more days than than not that I not want to go work out. So I would say maybe it did become a habit where I didn't think about it. But some days I just didn't want to do it. And those days were often. So that's the reality. But you still do it anyways because it's the right thing to do for you. And ultimately, you do love it. Okay, so now we've just got the Imagine the Best 2023. You'll say you write for five minutes if you're listening to this. And then you're going to do what I want to do is take those, the worst and the best case scenarios, roll them up and throw them in the trash because they're not real. That's not how life works. That's not what's happening. The worst isn't going to happen unless you let it in the best probably won't happen because the reality is it takes a lot of hard work. You can get there for sure in a sense, but we also don't know what's going to happen because the future changes constantly. So you're going to write down in one sentence, one sentence, long term goal. That's it. This is what I want you to do. There is some research backing writing down your goals. But this is where I think we get complicated, writing down all these things that you want to do from the 10 categories that I mentioned before and forgetting that you need one singular focus. I'm telling you, 365 days. How many times have you yourself said, oh, time flies or heard somebody else say it? It, it Whatever. Time is whatever it is. It's 24 hours in a day. We have so many coins. It either flies for you or it doesn't. But the thing is, you need one singular focus for the next at least 365 days. So one fine, maybe two sentences if you want to push it. And then you put it on a little post-it or a tiny little piece of paper, one sentence. This is what I'm going to do by the end of the year. This is who I'm going to be. 
and then you put that away in your wallet, in your purse, in your drawer, somewhere where you don't see it. And the reason we do this is, again, I'm taking this from personal experience. I journaled a lot last year, a lot, a lot, a lot. And I reread it and it took me days and days and hours and hours. And what I realized is I know exactly what I want. And I know that you know exactly what you want. We don't need these long winded sentences and essays about what we want and all these different kinds of goals. You need one long term goal. You already know what it is. You know it. I know you know it. It's in your heart. It's been there. The reason why you're here is because you haven't done it. You haven't taken action. And this is why we transition to this next part is your identity. That is the problem. You already know what you want. I know you do. If you say you don't, this might be mean, but if you say you don't, then you're a child. Adults know what they want. Adults also hide away what they want and pretend that it doesn't exist because it's too hard or they're too scared and they forgot what it's like to be a child and just do it. So then we got to look at that. This is the next part, your identity. And how do we get to your identity of a person who does the thing? And this is it. Now we come to the short term. You pick one thing. I'm so serious about this. You pick one single thing to change your life that you're going to do for the next 30 days. If you know me, I hate the 30 day thing, but I think it works for some people. It gives them a goal. So that's fine. We'll do it because of that. You're going to pick one thing that you're going to do for the next 30 days. This is something that you can do. It's not hard. It's specific. What are you going to do? I don't like those smart goals, like specific, measurable, um, achievable, uh, relevant, and time bound. Well, I guess we're kind of doing that, but I don't want to focus on that. Just let's be adults here. Pick a goal that you're going to do for 30 days. Can you eat one? Like, don't try to eat healthy all the time. Maybe that won't work, but you could do one meal a day that's healthy. Is that possible? You could do no chips, no sugar, no ice cream. These things are hard, but they're reasonable. You could exercise or do 20 push-ups every day for 30 days. I need to make this clear. It's not about the thing. It's about the identity that comes with the doing. Let me repeat that. It's not about the thing, the task. It's about the identity and mindset that comes with doing the task. This is so important. I hope that makes sense to you. That could be the most important takeaway here. And we're going to do one thing. Again, you got to schedule it and it has to be a must for you. And it, uh, this one I think is the most important thing. And you might be like, Scott, none of this sounds fun. It needs to be fun for me. I really wanted to change my life. I love learning and growing. And I knew that I was always a learner. It just kind of got taught out of me or teased out of me or whatever or sports out of me. People were like playing sports, but I always love learning. And so when I want to do, I fell into like self-improvement. Oh, I loved it. I was like, Oh, I can get better at this. Oh, I can get better. I can learn this. I can do this. So it was fun for me. Find something that's fun. Okay. This is where I get worried. Like eating healthy for a lot of people doesn't sound fun. The truth is, it's. I keep telling people this, it's no different than eating unhealthy. Neither one is like fun or not fun unless you make it. Like if you're going to make unhealthy food, you can also, and have fun doing it, you can also make healthy food and have fun doing it. It's all your perspective on that. Eating a bag of chips is no more fun than eating a salad might be a little bit different in taste and you get used to the taste because that's what humans do. They acclimate and adjust. So you get to choose what's fun. So decide what's fun and it has to be a must. I found this too. I needed to change my life. On days when I feel like I don't or I get stuck in a rut, I notice that the must is gone. And obviously the must, yeah, that sounds funny, musty. But you need to have a reason for doing it. And now, obviously, since I've created content and posting and doing this, I feel responsible for wanting to help people, which is a really good must. Maybe you're doing it for your children. Maybe you're doing it for your partner. 
obviously having a reason outside of yourself that's bigger than yours. Okay, that one got cut off there at the end. Still new to this, but ran out of time doing that. I was talking about fun. So doing the one thing, and I hope I got this point across in it, is it's not about doing the actual thing. Like if you say you're going to exercise you know, for 30 minutes every day for the next 30 days. It's not about the exercising 30 days. It's about doing. Are you going to do it? The person that does it, it's the identity that comes with the doing. And I hope that all makes sense. And that leads us to this last part here is you need to create a values list. This is everything. I swear by this. I refer to this all the time. Actually, it lives in my brain now. And it's a list of values that anytime you have a decision or anything or days you don't want to do stuff, it comes back to the values list. And this is it. My number one thing is integrity. So anytime I say something, words come out of my mouth that I say I'm going to do something, I have to do it. I think this is the secret hack. It's the one that's driven me to do all of this and pushed me past all of those hard days and pushed away the unhealthy food is because I have to do the thing that I say I'm going to do. And then health is another one on my value list. So anytime there's unhealthy food, I can't because that person that I'm becoming doesn't eat unhealthy. And I value that so much more than anything else. So it's integrity, health, I have growth and learning and all these things. And again, that's why I'm I'm doing this live tomorrow is that I said I was going to do it. And people said they would join. And I said, if people would join, I will create something and I have to do it. The old me would have kind of backed out, right? Oh, technical difficulties. Can't do it. <laughs> but no, I can't. The new person doesn't do that. And then I wanted to end on this note. Um, I will do this forever. Have you ever heard somebody say that? Like, oh, I'm going to eat healthy forever. I'm going to exercise forever. I don't know if this is realistic. And people have said to me like, oh, if you're going to go travel the world again, how are you going to exercise and meditate and do all these things forever? And I realize it's not about the forever thing. Sure, there might be some days or I might be traveling and it might be hard to keep it going forever. Something might get in the way. Who knows? But it's not that. That doesn't matter. It's the mindset. When you get to the mindset where you're like, I'm going to do this forever, no matter what, that's where you need to be. That mindset is necessary. That's why I don't like the 30 day challenge thingies, because they're basically just saying, I'm going to do this or stop drinking alcohol or exercise for 30 days. So after the 30 days, I can feel good about myself and that I've accomplished something. And it's not about that at all. This is the whole reason why we're here today is it has nothing to do with the goals. It's about the identity, the identity, the identity, the identity. Who's the person? Who's the person? Look at yourself. Who are you? Okay, and I'm going to end it with this bonus. Do hard shit. And I know this isn't for everybody. I think of people like David Goggins, you know, who says like run a hundred mile marathon and all this stuff. And I'm not saying that kind of thing. I'm saying that things that make you uncomfortable, you need to do them. And I am such a believer in this because it worked for me. It worked so well for me. And that's why life is tough and subjective because I am positive that it works because it worked for me. And there's no more guarantee I can get than something that's worked for myself. So I don't know if it works for you, but I can say that it worked for me a thousand percent. Is that doing the stand up comedy, getting on stage when that voice was screaming to run? get out of there. No one will even know you're here. It's not important. Who cares about doing this and still getting on stage anyways? And then doing it a few more times, well, 45 more times after that. But the point is, it wasn't so much about, I did kind of want to pursue it and see, I was like, I'm going to be the next biggest comedian. But then I realized it wasn't about that. It was about getting over the fear. And now I get to carry that around in my back pocket. So when anything scary comes up, I can just pull that out and be like, oh, you did that thing. Okay. Yep. You can do anything. That's it. The number one thing that terrified me. I'm not saying to go do that immediately, although I think that's a method to keep in mind. You know, when you can do these things, even with a cold shower, I still do it every day. And anytime something hard, I'm like, oh, I do that. And that's way harder than this. Okay, go. And it, I, I think it's an incredible tool to have in your toolbox. Okay. I'm not going to keep rambling on. I'm going to leave it there. Always do and have your best day.